Howard Henry's Rainy Day by Francesca Simon Read by Shamira Mir Chapter 1 Horrid Henry was bored. Horrid Henry was fed up. He'd been banned from the computer for rampaging through our town museum. He'd been banned from watching TV because he was caught watching a teeny tiny bit after he'd been told to switch it off straight after Mutant Max. Could he help it of an exciting new series about a rebel robot had started right after? How would he n- known if it were any good unless he'd watched some of it? It was completely unfair and all of Peter's fault for telling on him. And mum and dad were the meanest, most horrible parents in the world. And now he was stuck indoors all day long with absolutely nothing to do. The rain splattered down. The house was grey. The world was grey. The universe was grey. I'm bored, wailed Henry. Read a book, said Mum. Do your homework, said Dad. No, said Horrid Henry. Then tidy your room, said Mum. Unload the dishwasher, said Dad. Empty the bins, said Mum. No way, shrieked Horrid Henry. What was he, a slave? Better keep out of his parents' way, or they'll come up with even more horrible things for him to do. Chapter 2. Horrid Henry stomped up to his boring bedroom and slammed the door. Ugh! He hated all his toys. He hated all his music. He hated all his games. Ugh! What could he do? Uh Aha! He could always check to see what Peter was up to. Perfect Peter was sitting in his room, arranging stamps in his stamp album. Peter is a baby, Peter is a baby, said Horrid Henry, sticking his head round the door. Don't call me a baby, said Perfect Peter. OK, Duke of Poop, said Henry. Don't call me Duke, shrieked Peter. OK, Poopsicle. Mum, wailed Peter. Henry called me a Poopsicle. Don't be horrid, Henry, shouted your brother. Stop calling him names. Horrid Henry smiled sweetly at Peter. Okay, Peter, because I'm so nice, I'll let you make a list of ten names that you don't want to be called, said Henry, and it will only cost you one pound. One pound? Perfect Peter could not believe his ears. Peter would pay much more than never to be called Poopsicle ever again. Is this a trick, Henry? said Peter. No, said Henry. How dare you? I make you a good offer and you accuse me. Well, just for that. Wait, said Peter. I accept. He handed Henry a pound coin. Chapter 3. At last, all those horrid names would be banned. Henry would never call people Duke of Poop again. Peter got out a piece of paper and a pencil. Now, let's see what to put on the list, Peter thought for a second. Poopsicle for a start. And I hate being called Baby and Nappy Face and Duke of Poop. Peter wrote and wrote and wrote. OK, Henry, here's the list. Names I don't want to be called. 1. Poopsicle. 2. Duke of Poop. 3. Ugly. 4. Nappy Face. 5. Baby. 6. Toad. 7. Smelly Toad. Eight, Ugg. Nine, Worm. Ten, Wibbly Pants. Horrid Henry screamed at the list. Fine, Pongy Pants, Henry said. Sorry, I meant Poopy Pants. Or was it Smelly Nappy? Mum, wailed Peter. Henry's calling me names. Henry, screamed Mum. For the last time, can't you leave your brother alone? Horrid Henry considered. Could he leave that worm alone? Peter's a frog, Peter's a frog, chanted Henry. Mum! screamed Peter. That's it, Henry, shouted Mum. No pocket money for a week. Go to your room and stay there. Fine, shrieked Henry. You'll all be sorry when I'm dead. He stomped down the hall and slammed his bedroom door as hard as he could. Why were his 
parents so mean and horrible. He was hardly bothering Peter at all. Peter was a frog. Poor Henry was only saying the truth. Boy, would they be sorry when he died of boredom stuck up there. If only we'd let him watch a bit extra TV, Mum would well. Would that have been so terrible? If only we'd not make him do chores, Dad would sob. Why didn't I let Henry call me names? After all, I do have smelly pants, Peter would sob. And now it's too late. We're so sorry, they would shake. But wait, would they be sorry? Peter would grab his room and all his best toys. His arch enemy, stuck up Steve, could come over and snatch anything he wanted. Even his skeleton bank and goo shooter. Peter could invade the purple hand fort and Henry couldn't stop him. Moody Margaret could hop over the wall and lick his flag. And his biscuits and his dungeon dinkin, even his super soaker. No! Chapter 4. Horrid Henry went pale. He had to stop these righteous thieves. But how? I could come back and haunt them, thought Horrid Henry. Yes, that would teach those grave robbers not to mess with me. Ooh, get out of my room, you horrible toad. He would moan, touch my goo shooter and you'll be morphed into ectoplasm. He groaned spookily from under stuck up Stevie's bed. Ha, huh, that would show it. Or he'd pop out from inside Moody Margaret's wardrobe. Give Henry's toys back. You miserable, slimy snake, he would rasp. That would teach her a thing or two. Henry smiled, but fun as it would to be haunt people, he'd rather stop horrible enemies snatching his stuff in the first place. And then suddenly Horrid Henry had a brilliant, spectacular, marvellous idea. Hadn't one told him the other day that people wrote wills to say, who they wanted to get all their stuff when they died. Henry had been thrilled. So when I die, I get all your money, Henry beamed. Wow. This house will be his. And the car. And he'd have the boss of the TV, because it would be his too. The only shame was, couldn't you just give it all to me now? Asked Henry. Henry, snapped Mum. Don't be hurried. There was no time to lose. He had to write a will immediately. Old Henry sat down at his desk and grabbed some paper. My will. Warning. Do not read unless I am dead. I mean it. If you are reading this, it's because I'm dead and you aren't. I wish you were dead and I wasn't so I could have all your stuff. It's so not fair. First of all, to anyone thinking of snatching my stuff just because I'm dead, beware! Anyone who doesn't do what I want will get hooded by the bloodless and boneless ghoul, namely me. So there. Now the hard bit, thought Lord Henry. Who should I give his things to? Was anyone deserving enough? Peter, you are a worm and a toad and this ugly baby nappy, smelly face, Oh, wibble wobble pants poopsicle. I leave you. Hmm, that toad shouldn't really get anything. But Peter is his brother after all. I leave you my sweet wrappers and a muddy twig. That was more than Peter deserved so still. Steve, you are stuck up in the world's most horrible worst cousin. You can have a pair of socks. You can choose between the blue ones with the holes or the falling orange ones. Margaret, you knit face, I'll give you a purple hand flag to remember me. Not! You can have two radishes in a night with a chopped up head. And keep your paws off my grizzly grub box. Or else. Miss Battleaxe, you are the worst teacher ever. I'll leave you a broken pencil. Aunt Ruby, you can have the lime green cardigan back that you gave me for Christmas. Hmm, so far he wasn't doing well given any of his good things away. 
Ralph, you can have my goose shooter, but only if you give me your football and your bike and your computer games. Slime goals. That was more like it. After all, why should he be the only one writing a will? Chapter 5. It was certainly a lot more thinking about getting stuff from other people than it was giving away his own treasures. In fact, wouldn't he be better off helping others, telling them what he wanted? Wouldn't it be awful if Rich Aunt Ruby had left him some of Steve's old clothes with her, well, wishing he'd be delighted? Better write to her at once. Dear Aunt Ruby, I'm leaving you something really, 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 really great in my will. So make sure you leave loads of cash in yours. Your favourite nephew, Henry. Now Steve. Henry was leaving him an old pair of socks, but Steve didn't have to know that. Did he? For all Henry knew, Steve loved socks. Dear Steve, you know your new blue racing bike with the silver trim? Well, when you're dead it won't be any use to you, so please leave it to me. In your will, your favourite cousin, Henry. P.S. By the way, no need to wait till you're dead. You can give it to me now. Ha ha ha. Right, Mum and Dad. When they were in the old people's home, they'd hardly need a thing. A rocking chair or a blanket each would do fine for them. So how would Dad's music system look in his bedroom? Where could he put Mum's clock radio? Harold Henry always liked the chiming clock on the mantelpiece and the picture of the blackbird better go and check to where to put them. Chapter 6 Henry went into Mum and Dad's room and grabbed an armload of stuff. Henry staggered to his bedroom and dumped everything on the floor. Then he went back for a second helping, stumbling and staggering under his heavy bird. Harold Henry swayed down the hall and crashed into Dad. What are you doing? said Dad, staring. That's mine! And those are mine! said Mum. What is going on? shrieked Mum and Dad. I was just checking out all the stuff that will be in my room and you're in the old people's home, said Henry. I'm not there yet, said Mum. Put everything back, said Dad. Hold Henry scowled. Here he was, just trying to think ahead, and he gets told off. Well, just for that, I won't leave you any of my nights in my will, said Henry. Honestly. Some people are so selfish. The end.